Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to talk about a problem with a big HOA in Power Wrench in Gilbert. It was brought to my attention yesterday. And uh, but first, I'm going to go ahead and tee up. And we're going to talk about the responsibilities of an HOA. Now, there's different HOAs for different communities. Uh, we're all used to them if we live in a condo. Uh, you you know, the HOA controls the landscaping, the pool, the clubhouse and all of the common areas, but an HOA in a neighborhood, um, they, they govern, uh, what can go in and out of the community, uh, in what's called uh, deed restrictions. So they pretty much, uh, have rules in the CC and R's that uh, tell you, you know, you can't paint your house bright blue. Uh, what kind of landscaping you can have. Some of them say, I don't want any fruit trees out front, which kind of baffled me when I first moved here. But then I saw why that was being done. Cause not everybody picks up their fruit and you end up with roof rats. So I get it. Uh, but they also want to control what goes in and out of the community. In other words, you don't want a convenience store in the middle of your, your little gated community. So they control that as well. And then they, uh, they like to govern and control exactly what type of buildings and uh, um, structures go into the community. So HOAs can be good in that sense, but sometimes they're a little over the top. Now, um, HOAs also get a bad rap because people, you know, you impose responsibilities for the HOA that they really don't have. Um, you know, there's, you know, people call to complain that, you know, my, my neighbor needs to trim their hedges. Um, the, the dog is always barking. Um, you should be able to handle it on your own. You shouldn't have to bother an HOA board member for that. But I digress. So what's going on in Power Ranch? Well, man, oh, man. Um, they're embroiling a bunch of legal fees and the homeowners really didn't know about it because, you know, who goes to an HOA meeting anyway, right? Homeowners upset at HOA for spending more than $167,000 in legal fees. So why is that? And they say it's uh, something like, oh, what is it? 10 times over there, but six times over their budget. So they did have a budget for, for legal fees. That's good for them. They've blown it out. Well, what happened was this developer came in and in 2019, and uh, was putting in luxury condominiums. So they're building the project to get it done. And then what happens? Well, um, we had that big cough going around, and uh, they were having a hard time selling the condos, so they converted them to rentals. I guess they can do that, but I guess the HOA said, no, you can't. You said you were going to put in luxury condos. We approved the project. You flipped the switch and said, now it's going to be rentals. We didn't want more renters in our neighborhoods. We wanted homeowners. Thus, they're suing them. Well, they have the right to do that, and they did. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, they're being sued back, so it got pretty expensive. And, uh, and it says here, I do think there needs to be more financial accountability on where the money's going, how it's being spent. Endless lawsuits, I don't think that's where most residents want the money to go. So you're sitting there as a homeowner and you're going, wait a minute, you know, you're supposed to maintain the, the common areas, the grounds. And, uh, um, and then lo and behold, our budget shot, you're going to raise our dues because we're paying to sue a developer that put it in an apartment complex instead of putting in condos. I think the money can be better spent. So it's a really a big, big deal out there. And, uh, there's another controversy that was coming along out here. Let's see, when did this happen? Um, this one's in Val Vista Lakes. Arizona HOA wants to fine residents over social media rants. What? Yeah, they're going to fine you 250 bucks if you're not nice to them on Facebook. So they have a private Facebook group in this HOA, and people are using it and venting, saying, you know, Sally's a terrible board member. You should not vote her in. You should get her out. Um, you know, she, she drives a Subaru. Uh, you know, they're just, they're being insulting. And evidently it got out of control. So the HOA on their own decided that they're going to fine you for saying bad things about them on the Facebook group, 250 bucks per occurrence. Now, can they do this? My simple legal mind says, are you kidding me? But guess what? Uh, the <laughs> says here, if the residents don't comply, they may lose facility privileges and incur fines of $250 per day, according to two such letters seen by the Arizona Republic. Val Vista Lakes is an upscale neighborhood near Greenfield and Baseline Roads. 900-acre water wonderland contains 24 residential subdivisions and community amenities and includes sport courts, Sandy Beach, according to its website. 
there was an online debate about candidates. We all know how well that goes. Past board members and how board members money, board members spent money. The discussions were on her Facebook group, residents of VVL, formerly called Belvis Lakes Neighborhood, as well as another community Facebook group and the next door app. The posts appear to have been deleted by residents of VLL, VVL. And uh, but she had, but she hasn't deleted any. But Nardichia says she hasn't deleted. I got lost here for a minute. She said the posts were very good debate and conversations that needed to happen. Candidates running for the board were among the posters and commenters. This was dialogue that escalated. That happens all the time on Facebook. Just look at YouTube comments. Keyboard warriors. You're not trick. It's it's easy. In fact, I think social media is probably what's made politics what it is today, a little rougher, because we all get to type what we want to do, what we want to say, and then just go away. Nobody can go and knock on my door and have a conversation with me about it. But here you got a Facebook group that's uh, all about the association. And people were getting ugly on there, so they came out and said they're going to start finding you. Now, it's in litigation. Well, guess what? Their legal fees are going to go up. So is your HOA payment. So really, what do you want your HOA to do? I don't think you want them embroiled in legal battles unless it's something very substantial. And so you need to start attending some of these board meetings if you're in an HOA and have a say. You need to get involved because it looks to me like they're just writing checks. There's, you know, there's a few people making a financial decision there without involving you, the homeowner, because you're the one that's paying the monthly dues. And some of these monthly dues are pretty rough. I know when I was in Ocotillo Homeowner Association, there's several of them down there in Chandler, I think my HOA payment was $52 a month. And, uh, you know, 10 years later, it was $55 a month. That's a well-managed HOA, not involved in lawsuits. Some of these over 55 communities, those HOAs are pretty expensive because they've got huge clubhouses, gyms, golf courses, restaurants, gated communities, places like Sun Lakes and Sun City. Sun City West have some pretty hefty HOAs. They also have um, some fees that you pay when you purchase, which is called a capital improvement fee, which can be up to $5,000 in some cases. Well, what's that about? Well, it was decided a long time ago that with all of the turnover, people moving in, moving out in these over 55 communities, rather than constantly raising your HOA payment, if they want to improve the clubhouse or improve the gym, they collect these capital improvement fees from the new buyers and put it in a capital improvement fund. And that fund grows and they're able to make improvements or maintain the facilities better without increasing your monthly payment. Makes sense, but boy, that's rough when you're going to buy a place. You've already got $4,500 in closing costs. You got your down payment. And now you got to pay $4,800 for a capital improvement fee. For some people, that's a little tough to swallow, but you know that going in. Um, but it does underscore that when you are going into a commu community that's got an HOA, during your 10-day inspection period, get a copy of the CCNRs. They're supposed to provide it for you immediately within three days of your contract so that you can go over it and read it because that's when you want to know the rules. You can't park an RV here. What? I didn't know that. Um, you know, your RV can only be parked out in front of your house for 12 hours while you fill it up to go camping. You can't park it overnight. Are there parking restrictions on the street? A lot of them say, yes, you can't park overnight on the street. Well, if I got family coming over for Christmas, can I still do that? So that's all going to be in there. And if you find it too restrictive, then get out of the contract. But make sure you read every line. I know it's boring. It's a big document. There's a lot of stuff in it. But that's when you want to find this stuff out. Ask the neighbors. How's the HOA? What's it like here? Are they kind of annoying? Are they great? Um, so you don't want any surprises when you're buying a home that's got an HOA and some of them people get in and then they start hearing from the neighbors after they've, they've moved in just how restrictive they are and ridiculous. Uh, I, I saw not a confrontation, but I was down at Sun Lakes and they were having a big estate sale down the street. And so there are cars everywhere. Well, one of the neighbors put a couple road cones in front of his driveway because people kept blocking his driveway. He was coming and going, comes home, he can't park. And so the HOA golf cart guy, the patrol guy comes up and goes, Hey, you need to move those road cones. You need to put them in the driveway. You can't put them in the street. He goes, well, I got them in the street to keep you from parking here. They're just tiny little road cones. No, you can't have them in the street. And I thought, he said, the garage sales over in 45 minutes. And I thought, 
you don't have anything better to do than just drive around and tell people they got to move these road cones. Yeah, I think he had a great reason for putting them there. And so he just, rather than get into a heated discussion with the golf cart guy, he just picked up his road cones and he put them in his driveway and then, uh, didn't take long for somebody to park in front of his driveway. <laughs> so, you know, some, some of them are power hungry. Some of them are great people. Um, I know sometimes they'll drive by and call you and go, Hey, you left your garage door open. So there is, you know, it's nice having a patrol, but you're paying for that. You're paying these people to patrol around your neighborhood in some HOAs and some, uh, the only patrol that they're doing is going around doing neighborhood checks, making sure that, you know, your, your house is painted. They don't want HOAs. Don't want your houses to decay and ruin the value of the neighborhood. So watch this Gilbert one closely. It's going to be very interesting. I'll try and keep you posted and keep you up to date. Take care. Thanks for watching.